All right, folks, this story's all about our dude Oga, the total heartthrob of the girls in our department. So it starts on this sunny day, right? Oga's buddies are all like, yo, Oga, show us your volleyball skills. And bam, Oga's on it like a total pro, smacking that ball and scoring like a champ. His buddies are blown away, and the girls watching, they're going nuts over his moves. I mean who wouldn't dig a cool stud like Oga? Tall, talented, and totally stealing the show, he's got it all. But then, in the middle of all the cheers, Oga turns to his buddy Suzuki and starts giving him a hard time for being late. Suzuki's not too pleased about it, for good reason. He's just looking at Oga like, what's up with you, man? And then Oga's like, come with me to the restroom. Hold up, what? Is Oga into guys or what? Guess we'll find out soon. And we're not the only ones wondering. Even the girls watching their convo are totally shocked. But Suzuki's not having it. He tells Oga to man up and go by himself. But nope, our hero's not about to do that. Turns out, the super cool Oga is scared stiff of some ghost that's supposedly haunting the restroom. And just like that, the girls who were swooning over him. Yeah, they're not impressed anymore. Poor Oga just got dropped back into the friend zone. But here's the kicker. It's not just some silly story for Oga. Nah, this dude's so freaked out he's been seeing this ghost girl around the school. He curses the day he ever set foot in this haunted place, swearing he'd never have enrolled if he'd known. Suzuki can't resist teasing him, saying he wouldn't have chickened out if he knew someone influential recommended the school. So, yeah, Oga Masamichi, our lead in this crazy tale, isn't your typical hero with bravery and power. Nope, he's just a high schooler who's nothing but a scaredy cat. Oga, a sophomore at Denai Senior School, is basically a rock star there. Everyone knows him. Seniors, juniors, guys, girls, you name it. But here's the kicker. Despite being tall, good-looking, and all that jazz, Oga's still flying solo in the romance department. And why, you ask? Well, it's all because of his spine-chilling fear of, well, everything. Lately, he's been so spooked that he won't even go to the restroom without someone watching his back. And when his buddy Suzuki starts teasing him about it, Suzuki steps up like Iron Man to Captain America and tells Oka to chill out. So they head to the restroom, but Oka's freaking out over every little noise. He clings to Suzuki like his life depends on it, practically bending the poor guy in half. Suzuki reassures him it's just the sound of water. But when Oka finally steps into a stall, he's like, yo, come in with me. Gross, right? Reluctantly, Suzuki follows him in, but he's smart enough to keep up a conversation to make sure Oga knows he's waiting outside. But then, when Oga finally emerges, he sees this ghostly girl smirking at him from afar. Seriously, girl, cut him some slack. Without a second thought, Oga bolts out of there to save his own skin. But here's the kicker. Turns out this so-called ghost girl actually has a crush on Oga. And get this, she's not even a ghost. She's just a regular first-year student named Sayama Yumeko, head over heels for our charming Oga. Who saw that coming, huh? As Yumeko walks outside, her friend excitedly asks if she got to talk to her crush. Unfortunately, Oga mistook her for a ghost and bolted. Yumeko turns to her friend, questioning if she's really that scary, and her friend assures her she's not. But hey, sometimes honesty isn't the best policy, right? Yumiko figures she'll have to find another way to win Oga's heart. Maybe some hair, a little magic, and poof. He's hers. But how can she even pull that off when she can't even manage a conversation with him? The next day, Suzuki grumbles at Oga for ditching him and running out of the restroom alone. And Oga? Man, he's been through the ringer. He can't sleep, he's showering with his eyes wide open, fear's got him doing some crazy stuff. Even in broad daylight, he can't handle the restroom solo. And when he does venture in, he's keeping Suzuki on speed dial. Honestly, Suzuki deserves a medal for putting up with this scaredy cat. While lost in his thoughts, Yumiko suddenly bursts onto the scene, scaring the Bejesus out of Oga. He falls flat on his back and scrambles out of there. But this time with a letter in hand, a letter from Yumiko. Oga thinks it's some cursed message from the ghost or something. Seriously, this guy's nerves are shot. But when Suzuki insists on reading it, Oga freaks out, convinced he'll die if he hears it and sure enough, he faints at the thought. Meanwhile, the girls are curious about what Yumiko wrote. She explains it's all about her feelings for Oga, and they're all hoping to hear back from him. Yumiko over the moon, finally getting her feelings out there. She's got butterflies just thinking about Oga's response. Turns out, Yumiko is also an artsy type, pouring her heart out for Oga on canvas every day. But sadly, the guy she loves thinks she's a ghost. Talk about a rough situation. Yet, Yumiko is not giving up, She's juggling both her love life and her art, and she's determined to make it work. So, here's the deal with Oga right now, he's freaking out because he's convinced some girl, 
who he swears is like a ghost, is totally harassing him. Sounds totally nuts, I know, but Oak is dead serious about it. Thing is, this ghost girl is actually just a regular human, made of flesh and blood, just like the rest of us. But get this, while Oak is seeing her as some spooky apparition, the whole dang school is shipping her with this guy named Yumeiko. Yeah, it's a classic one-sided crush situation. Later on, this girl barges into the art room, all worked up, asking if Yumeiko really sent a love letter. Man, her love life is blowing up big time. When the news spreads that she actually went and spilled her guts to the guy she likes, her friends are floored. But Yumeiko, she's totally cringing at the attention. Meanwhile, there's Takano Natsu, Yumeiko's childhood buddy and current classmate, going all out to support Yumeiko now that she's spilled her feelings. She's on a mission to make sure Yumeiko's love letter does its magic. Talk about a ride or die friend, right? We could all use someone like that. But here's the kicker. It's been three whole days since Yumeiko handed over that letter, and she's just chilling like it's no big deal. I mean, how's she keeping her cool? What a pure soul, seriously. So, Takano, being the super helpful friend she is, comes up with this alternative plan. She suggests sending a follow-up letter later to get feedback on the first one. Yumeiko is totally down with it because let's face it, it's less scary for her too. But little does she know, she's the one giving our knave hero a major case of the jitters. Takeno hands Yumiko a piece of paper from her notebook to write the letter, but when Yumiko sees her handwriting and those spooky doodles in the corners, it's like something straight out of a horror movie. Talk about giving her the creeps. Then Takano starts suggesting tweaks to the letter to make it sound nicer. Um, why the heck do we need to add the date? It's not like it's coming from some corporate office, right? After a bunch of edits, they end up with a stack of drafts for Oga. Takano decides to send them all to Oga and let him choose which one he likes best. Sounds good. Meanwhile, Oga's over the moon that three days have passed and that so-called cursed letter hasn't gotten to him. Seriously, is this guy real? Dude, it's someone's feelings on the line here, show a little respect, at least. Oga's friends, Suzuki and Anuma, try to set him straight, telling him there's nothing cursed about the letter, but Oka's sticking to his guns, adamant that it's cursed. And get this, he goes and uses up all the salt in the house, pouring it around the letter in water. Talk about feelings going down the drain, literally. As they head to their lockers, a new surprise is waiting for Oga, and let me tell you, it's enough to send shivers down your spine. Oga opens his locker and bam, a bunch of letters come flying out, complete with creepy sketches and ominous writing. No joke, it's pretty freaky stuff. Meanwhile, over in the first year class, the girls are getting antsy waiting for Oga to respond to their letter. But when they don't hear anything back, Takano suggests they just go up to Oga and ask him directly. Good luck with that, Takano. On the flip side, Oga's freaking out big time. He's clinging onto Suzuki, convinced that all these creepy letters mean he's about to kick the bucket. This scaredy cat is so nervous, he's about to wet his pants out of fear. He begs Suzuki to help him get to the restroom, but Suzuki's not buying it. Now Oga's gotta face his fears all on his own. He's so scared he's even freaking out about the school walls. Oban keeps calling for Suzuki, but it seems even his buddies had enough of his scaredy cat antics and isn't picking up. That's when the girls spot him in the hallway, and Yumiko jumps into action, all pumped up with motivation from Takano to show off her best smile. But little does she know, that's the last thing Oga wants to see, and her smile sends shivers down his spine, making him bolt from the scene. This harsh reality hits Yumeiko hard. Her crush, Oga, hasn't even bothered to glance at those letters. Meanwhile, Oga's lying on the floor, begging his friends to sprinkle some salt around him. So, like, the next day rolls around, and Oga's just chilling in his crib, you know, his sacred space, thanking his lucky stars that the creepy ghost didn't decide to tag along. And then bam, his phone starts buzzing, and he gets this message from the delivery folks saying his absolute favorite manga is waiting for him at the doorstep. Man that feeling when you finally get your hands on something you've been craving. It's like that rush I got when my first PlayStation arrived. But back to Oga, he's all hyped, right? Ready to grab his manga. But then, oh snap, he peeks out the door and spots this ominous shadow lurking on the other side. Cue the fear, man, he's thinking, oh no, it's the ghost. So he starts hollering for his sister at the top of his lungs, hoping she'll come to the rescue. But nah, she's too busy fixing her hair. You know how it is with girls and their beauty routines. Once they're in the zone, good luck getting through to them. It's like girl code 101 or something. Oka should've known better, right? Anyway, he musters up some courage and decides to break it out, thinking it's just his manga waiting for him. But when he cracks open that parcel box, whoa, plot twist. 
It's some creepy glove instead. And his voice is shaking as he calls, freaking out over this unexpected surprise. Yumeko and Takano, the two girls, they think they've totally nailed it, you know, like they've successfully stirred up some emotions. But no, turns out it's a major letdown. Better brace yourself, Yumeko, disappointment is coming your way. So, here's the deal. Yumiko actually went and knitted this glove for her crushed Oga. Like, she's put her heart and soul into it, thinking it'll warm him up when winter hits and maybe even melt his heart a little. But here's the kicker. Instead of Oga's heart melting, it's practically doing backflips in his chest. And get this, Yumiko even threw in some strands of her own hair, thinking it'll bring him extra luck or something. She wanted to toss in a hat too, you know, making a complete winter package, but Takano's like, chill, we can always give it to him later. Fast forward to the next day, Oga's still stuck on yesterday's craziness when two girls sidle up to Anuma, asking him to give them the lowdown on Buddhism. Apparently, they're not exactly experts in that department. So they're all, come on, Anuma, show us what you got. Be our guide through the spiritual realm. But Anuma's not buying it. He's like, why me? Turns out, dude lives near a temple, and these girls figure he's the go-to guy for all things spiritual. Oga's ears perk up at this revelation, and he latches onto Anuma practically begging him to help rid him of whatever curse he thinks is hanging over him. But Anuma? He couldn't care less. See, like Oga, he's got his own fan club. But unlike Oga, it's not because he's scared of his own shadow. Oga's practically on his knees, pleading with Anuma to cleanse him of this curse, like he's begging a king for his daughter's hand in marriage. But Anuma's got one word for him, nope. So these girls are straight up questioning Anuma, like, yo, did you can tell Oga that Yumiko isn't some ghost, but just a regular human like the rest of us? But Anuma isn't about to waste his breath arguing with this nerd who never listens to a word his buddies say. He's sick and tired of Oga's constant begging for help, not to mention how he always gets on his last nerve. But eventually, Anuma caves. He's like, fine, I'll help you purify, but listen up, buddy boy, nothing in this world comes for free. So he lays out his demands for Oga, and let me tell you, they're not exactly a walk in the park. From taking notes for him to picking up bread, and even sewing his gym suit, Anuma got a laundry list of tasks for Oga to tackle. But that's not all. Anuma figures since Oga's so gung-ho about this purification stuff, he might as well put him to work in the club's game activities too. I mean, the guy's a volleyball prodigy, right? Here's where things get spicy. Oga tosses the ball at Anuma during practice, but dude straight up doesn't catch it. And when Suzuki calls him out on it, Anuma's like, nah, Oga's got this. He's catching it for me. Suzuki's not having any of it, though. He's all up in Anuma's grill for participating in the games when he clearly didn't want to do squats. But hey, sometimes you gotta play by the rules and club activities are mandatory. So Oka's like, all right, let's bounce, Anuma. Maybe once we're back home, you can finally help me purify. But oh no, the favors list doesn't stop there. Anuma hits him with that icy tone, demanding tea, and Oga's left with no choice but to play servant. But then, finally, the moment Oga's been waiting for arrives. Anuma tells him to pray to Buddha for purification, squaring he'll solve all his problems. But wait a sec, what problems are we even talking about here? So, Oga's been all gratitude towards Anuma for the past week, and you already know why. He's convinced that it's Anuma's prayer that's kept him ghost-free all this time. But just when he thinks he's in the clear, he pops open his locker and bam, another creepy surprise awaits him, a mask and a glove, probably the match to the ones he got before. The girls are all praising Yumiko for her knitting skills, but who knows how freaked out poor Oga must have been seeing that stuff. And to make matters worse, Yumiko went and put her hair in the mask, turning the already spooky thing into something straight out of a horror movie. Oga's freaking out, naturally. He's thinking this mask and glove combo is a sign that the ghost is out for blood. So he lays into Anuma, blaming him for his so-called purification not working. He even goes as far as calling Anuma and the other priests frauds. Ouch, Oga, way harsh. But is Anuma backing down from this whole purification business? Nope, not a chance. He's doubling down, saying purification needs to be a regular thing and that Oga needs to stay under his purifying wing more often. You know how every town's got its own scary stories, right? Well, one of ours is about this tunnel behind the school. There are whispers going around that there's a ghost girl living in there and she's all about pulling unsuspecting folks into the tunnel to have a little chat. But here's the kicker. Once you turn to look at her, she whisks you away to who knows where. And hey, have you noticed something? Why is it always female ghosts? Is the ghost world on some kind of women empowerment kick or what? But then you've got Suzuki, bold as can be, scoffing at the rumors. 
He strolled right through that tunnel on his way to snag some manga discounts at the bookstore across the way. I mean, who's got time for fear when there are deals to be had? Meanwhile, Takano storms into class, all worked up, asking Yumeko if she's heard back yet. Nope, Yumeko is still waiting for a reply. Hoping Oga might spill the beans soon, Takano's ready to take matters into her own hands and grill him for her friend. But hold up, Yuniko not having it. She wants to handle the Oga interrogation herself. Drama alert. And then there's our so-called hero, or maybe not. He's standing before that infamous tunnel, cursing Anuma for leaving him hanging. And wouldn't you know it, Suzuki's already skipped town, heading home for the day. Tough break, buddy, tough break. As Oga waits and waits for Anuma, it finally sinks in, dude's not showing up. So Oga's gotta face this challenge solo. Time to man up, Oga. He strides into that tunnel like he owns the place and before he knows it, he's on the other side. Honestly, not as hard as he thought it'd be. He grumbles at Suzuki for spreading those bogus rumors and then dives into the discounted manga like there's no tomorrow. Meanwhile, outside the shop, his two buddies are eagerly waiting for Senpei to emerge. Yumeko has been tailing him through the tunnel and into this bustling market, but she just can't work up the nerve to talk to him, and she's not even letting Takano step in to help. But today's the day, she tells herself. Today, she's making it happen. So, she trails Oga, and when he heads back into the tunnel, Takano gives her a little nudge, urging her to seize the moment. But here's the thing, Yumeko. Not all friendly advice is gold. But she's putting all her trust in Takano's wisdom and goes for it. Meanwhile, Oga's been holding out hope for some passerby to join him on his trip back through the tunnel. It's even scarier and darker now, but it looks like he's on his own. No rescue party in sight today, it's all up to him. As Oba ventures into the tunnel, Yumeko, the ghost girl of Oba's universe of misunderstandings, grabs his shirt, halting him in his tracks. She closes in, claiming she's been keeping an eye on him. Suddenly, Oka finds himself living out Suzuki's spooky tale. Remembering Suzuki's advice not to turn back or listen to anything, Oga bolts out of the tunnel faster than you can blink, leaving Yumeko bewildered. Meanwhile, Takano approaches Yumeko, eager to hear about the success of today's attempt. But Yumeko's expression says it all, another big fat nope. Just then, a few kids wander into the tunnel only to freak out when they spot Yumeko, mistaking her for the ghost. Looks like Oga's got some company in the scaredy cat department now. Back at school, Oga's fuming, claiming he actually encountered the tunnel ghost. But Suzuki can't contain himself. He bursts into laughter, admitting he made the whole thing up just to mess with Oga. Suzuki, one, Oga, zero. Now Oga's left scratching his head, wondering who or what grabbed his shirt in that tunnel. Back at school, Takano, the knight in shining armor for her friend, conjures up a solution akin to Vin Diesel for Paul Walker in the Fast and Furious series. She suggests offering Yumeko Oga's number, hoping this might finally crack the code for them. Yumeko caught up in a whirlwind of hesitation, but Takano's all in. She figures, even if they don't have a direct line to Oga, his friends might just be their ticket in. And so, the mission to find Senpei's friends begins. As they roam through the second year class, they spot Anuma, the dude who's always hanging around Senpei. Takano beckons him over and spills the beans about Yumeko's one-sided love saga with Oga. She explains that Yumiko is eager to get closer to Oga, and they could really use Anuma's help. But here's the kicker. Anuma's not exactly the proactive type. He's not about to lift a finger for strangers, no matter how much they plead. Despite his initial reluctance, the girls coax him outside. As Anuma approaches, Takano does the honors, introducing him to Yumeko. But as he takes a closer look, Anuma notices something off. Yumeko isn't exactly the picture of innocence up close. Meanwhile, Takano lays out her proposal, hoping Anuma will lend a hand in helping her friend connect with Oga, finally bridging the gap to her true love. But Anuma shuts down Takano's lengthy proposal with a simple, nope, smart enough to see through the potential headache it could bring. As Takano watches her opportunity slip away, she pulls out her final card. She asks for Oga's number in exchange for whatever Anuma wants. Classic move, right? But let's not forget, Anuma is a guy after all, and you never know what they might ask for. He could've requested a head or something. Instead, Anuma throws her a curveball, telling her to go clean the board in his place. Takano jumps at the chance, happy to do whatever it takes for her friend's sake. With his junior's efforts impressing him, Anuma finally agrees to help out. He tosses his phone to them to find Oga's number, a kind gesture, albeit a tad lazy. Seriously, who doesn't have a password on their phone these days? As they scroll through Anuma's phone flooded with texts, mostly from Oga, surprise surprise, the girls thank him for his assistance. 
Before they take off, they can't resist asking what Oga might be up to. But as they say, there are no free lunches in this world, and Anuma's got a price for every favor he grants. Handing them the notes for the social studies teacher, he simply states that Oka's being his usual loud self. Gee, seriously, we already knew that. Thought Anuma was about to drop some juicy secrets or something. Later in the evening, Takano checks in with Yumiko to see if she's made the call yet, but Yumiko's too shy to dial Oka's number. Takano, ever the problem solver, suggests meeting near the station to offer moral support. The girls rendezvous outside the bustling station, but Takano's taken aback to find Yumiko still sporting her school uniform. Yumiko's explanation shocks her even more. Apparently, that's all she's got to wear. Takano shrugs it off and grabs the phone to make the call, but Yumiko's heart starts racing even faster. She lashes out and snatches the phone back, admitting she can't bring herself to call Oga. Come on, Yumiko, you've come this far. No turning back now. But she confesses that hearing Oga's voice so close to her ear would fluster her too much to talk. Takano, ever the optimist, sees this as an opportunity. She urges Yumiko to confess her love for Oga directly today and seal the deal. Meanwhile, Oga's phone rings and he hesitantly picks it up, fearing it might be some scammer. But as he hears the voice on the other end, shills shoot down his spine. He realizes it's the voice of the alleged ghost claiming to be coming to his place or nearby. Oga swiftly blocks the number vowing never to take a call from it again. Just then, the doorbell rings, and he collapses in fear. His sister finds him dozed off, clueless about the parcel awaiting him. Yumiko crosses paths with Nanamiya, and shortly after, Takano joins them at the scene. Takano calls out to Yumiko, and notices Nanamiya's presence as well. With her usual energy, Takano asks the duo what they're up to. Nanamiya, ever observant, remarks on Takano's lively mood that day. Takano then turns to Yumiko, questioning if she's feeling all right, but Nanomiya interjects, informing Takano that Yumiko has been like this all day. Yumiko finally responds, revealing that she wants to look fashionable to meet Oga. Upon hearing this, Nanomiya jumps in, suggesting a boutique she knows and mentioning a sale happening there. Takano suggests they check it the next day. True to the plan, Yumiko meets Takano the following day, still sporting her uniform. Takano realizes Yumiko doesn't have anything else to wear. Yumeko compliments Takano's appearance, and they swiftly head into the boutique. Inside, Takano notices Yumeko's long hair and decides an accessory would complement her look. She presents Yumeko with a cute wire ponytail, adding a touch of charm to her ensemble. Takano enthusiastically remarks that Yumiko will look super stylish and fashionable with the ponytail. Without hesitation, she heads to the counter to pay. Yumiko feels a bit embarrassed and ashamed as she watches Takano pull out money, but Takano reassures her saying it's a birthday present, even though it's not Yumeko's birthday. After a while, Takano finishes putting the ponytail on Yumeko. You might think nobody could possibly have such a terrible sense of fashion, but brace yourself, Takano's created one of the worst looks possible for the already creepy-looking Yumeko. Takano proudly believes she's done a stellar job, but others might beg to differ, judging by the terrified reactions Yumeko gets from people. Undeterred, they move on to find clothes to match Yumeko's new accessory. Eventually, they arrive at a cosmetic store, where Takano insists that makeup is essential for looking good. She grabs a few products and proceeds to purchase them, eager to try them out on Yumeko. Alright, so check it out. Takano's still all gung-ho, thinking she's acting in Yumeko's makeup game. But let me tell ya, when she's all finished up, you might just want to take a step back and reconsider sticking with the old creepy Yumeko, cause what Takano's concocted is nothing short of a full-blown fashion catastrophe. I'm talking about Yumiko here, who already had this sorta airy vibe going on, but now, with that makeup, she's straight up looking like one of those dolls that haunt your nightmares, you feel me? Ponytails hanging in the air, lips painted all creepy-like, and a color scheme that screams red and black. Takano's there, patting herself on the back, thinking she's the Coco freaking channel of our time. But seriously, it's like a train wreck in slow motion. Then she hits Yumiko with the million dollar question, like, hey, Yumiko, you more of a skirt or pants kinda gal. And, before Yumiko can even answer, Takano's already off, grabbing this long white skirt, convinced it's gonna make Yumiko stand out cause of her dark hair. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not the worst thing in the world, but let's just say Takano's taste in fashion is, uh, unique, to say the least. Now, picture this. They're strutting their stuff, and everyone's losing their minds over Yumiko's whole ensemble. People are legit thinking she's some kinda monster or something. With that makeup and the white skirt, she's giving off major ghost vibes. Even the cashier's eyeing her like she's about to jump out of a horror movie.
But Takano? Oh no, she's completely clueless, thinking Yumeko's sheer beauty or whatever just stuns everyone. And finally, they're on their way to show off this masterpiece to Oga, like it's the Mona Lisa or something. Can't wait to see his reaction. It's gonna be epic. So, Yumiko finally musters up the courage to approach Oga and asks him straight up if she's looking fly. And what does Oga do? He bolts faster than a cheetah chased by a lion. I'm talking about Olympic level sprinting here. But get this, our dynamic duo, Takano and Yumiko, they're still convinced that Oga's running away because he's overwhelmed by Yumiko's cuteness. Yeah, right. Meanwhile, Oga's panicking like there's no tomorrow. He gets up Anuma for backup, but Anuma ghosts him, probably off doing who knows what. So, Oga's left with no choice but to send him a voice message, sounding like he's about to wet his pants, telling him the ghost situation just got serious. On the flip side, Anuma's seeing the messages, but he's like, nah, I've got better things to do. Typical. Fast forward to the next day, Yumeko and Takano are strolling down the street, and Takano's all like, yo, did Oga catch feelings for Yumiko or what? And then, out of the blue, Takano spots Anuma and summons him faster than you can say, Ghostbusters. She spills the tea to Anuma about how they cooked up this whole matching outfit scheme at the mall, thinking Oga would swoon over Yumiko. You know Takano always gotta hype things up a notch. So she's like, oh yeah, Yumiko was rocking that fashionista vibe, looking all cute and stylish. She spills the deets, saying she revamped Yumiko's whole look, starting with a new do then slapping on some makeup, and topping it off with some killer threads. Takano's all about that attention to detail, making sure Yumiko's outfit is on point. Then, they strut their stuff over to Oga to unveil the masterpiece. Takano's eager beaver, asking Anuma if Oga spilled any tea about Yumiko's glow-up. Anuma's pondering for a hot minute, then drops the bomb. Oga mentions something about leveling up. Well, you can imagine Yumiko and Takano losing their minds. They're like, yes, we did it. Thinking their master plan totally worked out, talk about a confidence boost. All right, students are off through their day at Denai High School. Here comes Oishi Kyuko, sophomore extraordinaire and part of the public moral committee. She rolls up to Asakawa, asking her to hold up for a sec. And get this, she whips out a measuring tape and starts sizing up Asakawa like it's nobody's business. Talk about the unexpected, right? Then she's all like, my bad for the interruption and bounces. Now, Asakawa and her buddy start dissecting Oishi's vibe. How she's always so serious, like love's not even on her radar. But little do they know, Oishi's got a whole crush saga going on behind that poker face. She's been eyeing this hottie in her class, Oga Masamichi, and let me tell ya, she's head over heels. To her, Oga's the whole package. Athletic, cool AF, super nice, and easy on the eyes. Plus, bonus points, cause there's no other girls gunning for him. Well, except for this one new girl who's caught Oishi's attention lately. Now, Oishi's not about to let some newbie swoop in and steal her man. She's onto the game, knowing this junior girl's got eyes for Oga too, but Oga's treating her like she's Casper the friendly ghost. So, Oishi's like, oh no you don't, and gears up to stake her claim. But here's the kicker. Even though they're in the same class, Oishi and Oga haven't exactly been chatting it up. Still, Oishi's determined to make her move, even if it means breaking the ice herself. All right, so Woshi's radar picks up Oga chilling in non-uniform attire, and she's all like, hold up, is this dude trying to pull a fast one on the school rules? So, being the savvy operator she is, she sees this as her golden ticket to strike up a convo with him. She strides over with that determined look in her eye, ready to lay down the law. She hits in with the whole, hey, it's against the rules to ditch the uniform, yeah no. But plot twist, Oga's like, ma, you talking to me? Turns out, she's actually addressing Onyuma, another classmate. But here's the kicker. Oishi's totally playing it cool. She's fully aware that Oga's got that charm that makes her knees weak. So she's using the old chat with Onyuma trick to reel him in. And guess what? It works like a charm. Oga's intrigued, so he saunters on over to see what's up. Smooth move. Oishi. Now, Onyuma, bless his soul, tries to justify the whole uniform situation. Saying it's stashed away at his place, and it's a pain to wear. But Uoshi's not backing down, oh no. She's on a mission, laying down the law like a boss, no exceptions allowed. She's like, listen up, Anuma, we don't mess around with rules here. And even though Anuma is like, yo, can you turn it down a notch? Uoshi's not letting up. She's determined to drive her point home, making sure Anuma knows he better shape up. And you know what? It works like a charm. Anuma's all, all right, all right, I'll be more careful next time. And just like that, 
Woshi's feeling like she's conquered Mount Everest. She's figured out the secret sauce to talking to Oga, and she's not about to let it slip away. Fast forward to lunchtime, and Oshi's at it again. This time, she's got her sights set on Oga's friend who's brought a manga to school. She's all up in his face, giving him the whole spiel about school rules and confiscation threats. Oga's friend's probably like, whoa, what's with this girl? But Oshi's not done yet. When Oga's buddy whips out a Switch console, she sees her chance to swoop in for another chat with Oga. Back to Anuma, she goes, scolding him for bringing games to school. But this time, she throws him a bone and lets it slide. Meanwhile, poor Anuma is probably thinking, what's gotten into her? But hey, it's all part of Oishi's master plan. Every day, like clockwork, she's using this tactic to get Oga's attention, even managing to sneak in a little bit of contact here and there. And she's not stopping anytime soon. Next day, she's gonna check up on Oga, and you better believe she's got a strategy up her sleeve. Watch out, world, Woishi's on a mission. So, Woishi's cruising down the sidewalk, keeping an eye out for Oga and Anuma. But hold up, Oga's actually following the dress code today, leaving Oishi scratching her head about how to kick off their daily chat session. But fear not, our girl, Oishi's got tricks up her sleeve. She speeds up to catch up with them, dropping a smooth line to Anuma about how he's looking sharp today, all while shooting a sly glance at Oga. She's thinking she's got this in the bag, right? Wrong. Turns out, Oga's been paying attention to all those rule-abiding chats she's been having with Anuma, and he's not about to risk another scolding. He's like, yeah, I'm just gonna stick to the rulebook from now on. Smooth move, Oga, real smooth. Meanwhile, Woishi's smirking, thinking she's got Oga right where she wants him. But oh boy, she's in for a surprise. All this time, Oga's been thinking Oishi's got a thing for Anuma, thanks to her laser-focused conversations. And just when Oishi's recovering from that bombshell, Anuma leans in close, whispering that he's got her back from now on. But hold up, Oishi's not just startled by his offer, she's freaking out cause Oga was just chilling real close by a second ago. Looks like our girl's got some recalculating to do. So, Oga's not playing games anymore. He straight up calls out Oishi on her sneaky tactics and drops the bomb. He knows what she's up to and asks her straight up if she's into Anuma. Talk about putting her on the spot. But then, in a hushed tone, Oba lets Oishi in on a little secret. She doesn't have to go through all this trouble. He's willing to lend a hand with the whole situation. And get this, he even hints that he's not planning on sticking to the rules much longer, giving Oishi the perfect excuse to keep chatting up Anuma. Smooth move, Oga, real smooth. But Oishi's caught off guard, scrambling to deny any feelings for Anuma. But it's too late. Oka's already peeking out, leaving Oishi flustered and probably kicking herself for getting caught out. Looks like her crush just made a major misstep, and Oishi's left to pick up the pieces. Tough break. The teacher's laying down the lowdown about what's gonna pop up on the test at the end of the month. And man, when the students catch wind of this impending test, they're straight up venting their frustration like, nah, not down for this test five. Then, one buddy hits up another, asking if they've hit the books for the test. But the other dude's like, Nah fam, been all about that gaming life. And it's like a collective sigh of relief when they realize none of them has cracked open a textbook. But hold up, plot twist. The teacher swoops in, catching wind of their convo about slacking off, and drops the bomb that if anyone flunks the test, no field trip for the crew. Cue the dramatic music. Fast forward to the classroom, and Oka's looking like he just got hit with a ton of bricks after hearing about the field trip jet party. His buddy Suzuki's like, bro, we gotta do something about this, feeling the pressure. But then there's Anuma, Mr. Smarty Pants, who's never even come close to failing a test. Dude's chilling, no sweat at all about acing this thing. Enter Oishi, the firecracker of the group, straight up losing it over Anuma's nonchalant attitude. She's like, nah, not on my watch, and declares she's gonna tutor Anuma, whether he likes it or not, cause she's made up her mind, like, the ultimate stubbornness. So, Oka's like, hey, why don't we all just hit up my crib for a study sesh? Group study, anyone. Let's get those brains in gear. All right, so while Yumiko and her crew are also wrapping their heads around this upcoming test, things take an interesting turn. Takano steps up to the plate and suggests they crashed at her place for a group study sesh. The squad's totally down for that plan, getting hyped up. Yumiko is like, yo, Takano's pad is legit massive, dropping that little detail to her bud. And Takano's all, yeah, since there's four of us, I've arranged for us to get picked up. So, after school, they roll out, and boom. A freaking limo pulls up, like a legit limousine, dripping with wealth vibes. Yumeko's crew is shook, jaws on the floor at the sight of this bougie ride. Meanwhile, the driver's like, I can chauffeur you every day. 
But Tecano's all polite about it, being like, nah, I'm good with my walks, thanks though. Respect, Tecano. Then, Tecano's like, hop in, y'all, offering drinks like it's no big deal. But her friends are like, hold up, won't we mess up your ride? And Tecano's just shrugging it off, saying it'll get cleaned anyway. They start connecting the dots, realizing this isn't Tecano's first rodeo in a fancy car. So, they hit up Tecano's crib, and damn, it's like something out of a movie. Huge mansion vibes, leaving them wide-eyed as they step inside. They settle at a table, ready to hit the books. But oh snap, Tycuno's dog decides to join the study sesh, barking up a storm and throwing them off their game. Plus, all the fancy decor around them is like a glittery distraction zone. Tough luck for the study crew. Yumenko is just chilling like a villain, not phased one bit by the distractions. She's in her own zen zone while everyone else is losing their minds. So, they're grinding through their study sesh, dog barking and all, until one friend finally cracks and speaks up about the canine cacophony. Takano, being the gracious hostess, summons her butler to whisk the dog away. Problem solved. Back to the grind they go, but then someone catches Yumeko slipping up. No biggie, right? Wrong. When Yumeko goes to fix her mistake with her trusty eraser, boom. Oka's name is plastered all over it. Talk about a major oops moment. Yumeko is like, oh snap, and swoops in to cover it up, playing it off like it's NBD. She's quick on her feet, though, erasing with her bare nails instead, which happened to be sporting Oga's name too. Say what now? Yeah, you heard me right. Yumeko's got Oga's name written all over her quite literally. When her friend catches wind of this, they're like, Yumiko, spill the beans. And what's her excuse? A good luck charm, <laughs> apparently. Yumiko got some serious explaining to do. But for now, she's sticking with the good luck story. Classic Yumiko, keeping us on our toes. Meanwhile, over at Oga's crib, it's game night instead of study night. Classic move from the boys. Onoma's lounging on the bed, while Oga and Suzuki are knee-deep in some console action. But then Oka's like, hold up, Onuma, you're supposed to be tutoring us, not catching Zs. And that's when Onuma drops the bomb that Marita's got the smarts too. So, they give Marita a shot at teaching. But surprise surprise, dude's clueless too. Turns out, they're all in the same sinking boat. It's a real facepalm moment when they realize they've been counting on each other, and nobody knows squat. Oba's about to blow a fuse, calling them out for being useless, but Suzuki's quick to remind him he's no different. Just when things are looking bleak, Anuma pulls a rabbit out of the hat. A reference book from Oishi. Jackpot. It's got all the exam goods they need. So, they dive into cram mode, soaking up that reference book like sponges. Fast forward to exam day, and the tension's thick as molasses. They're all crossing their fingers, hoping they'll nail it and score that sweet field trip. Meanwhile, Suzuki's wandering the halls when he stumbles upon an eraser with Oga's name scribbled on it. Bingo! That's Yumiko's eraser, MIA. And guess who's sitting in class looking downcast? Yup, Yumiko herself. Talk about a twist of fate. Looks like Yumiko got some explaining to do, and Suzuki's just stumbled upon the clue. So in class, Suzuki and his buddies are just shooting the breeze with a gal pal. She playfully taps Suzuki on the shoulder, teasing him about being silly and then bounces. Suzuki thinks there might be something more, you know. After she splits, Suzuki turns to Oga like, bro, did you see that? She's totally into me. But Oka's like, dude, what are you even talking about? So, Suzuki spells it out, like, she touched my shoulder, man. That's a sign, right? But then, Anuma chimes in, raining on Suzuki's parade. He's all, nah, that's just how girls are. They're touchy-feely with guys all the time. Suzuki's not having it, though. He's convinced Anuma only says that because he's used to getting touched up every day. So, Suzuki checks with Oga, hoping for some backup. And Oga's like, look, it's cool to get your hopes up when a girl touches you but don't read too much into it. Play it safe next time, dude. So, while all this drama is going down, Wooishi clocks the whole scene and figures Ogum might be into her if she lays a hand on him. She's like, okay, let's see if I can cozy up to Oga with a little physical contact. So, she plots her move and heads over to Anuma to put her plan into action. Wooishi comes up with this lame excuse about Oga not handing in his homework and offers to let him copy hers. Like, seriously, what's she even thinking? but she figures maybe getting touchy-feely with Anuma will somehow get her closer to Oga. Spoiler alert! It's a total bust. Woishi's left scratching her head, wondering why she even bothered to touch Anuma in the first place. To make matters worse, Anuma's like, um, actually, I'd already turned in my homework. But before he can say anything else, Oga jumps in from behind and tells Anuma to just take Woishi's notes without any fuss. On the other hand, 
Takano appears to be reading a manga where she sees a girl maintaining physical contact with a boy, and soon she mentions to Yumeko that this is what she should do with Oga as well. Hearing this idea, Yumeko immediately starts feeling shy, but soon Takano reminds Yumeko that she has held onto Oga's sleeves before. But this time, Takano suggests to Yumeko that she should try and touch Oga's skin this time as boys are generally very conscious with whom they have physical contact. Yumiko reveals to Takano that she has never touched someone before, and Takano responds and mentions to Yumiko that she should then practice. Takano then makes her way to Anuma to try and get his help. Takano reveals to Anuma that Yumiko wants to touch a boy and asks Anuma for his help. In return, Anuma asks for some juice to which Takano immediately agrees. Soon, as Anuma agrees, Takano gets a bit excited. Meanwhile, Yumiko appears to be somewhat excited as well. Anuma then decides to question Takano as to why she is trying to do this to which Takano responds and reveals to Anuma that she read it in a manga and thought that they should give it a go as well. Takano then mentions to Anuma that Yumiko wants a perfect opportunity to be alone with Oga where she can try and make physical contact to make Oga feel something. Takano is willing to make this happen by all means and she even offers a yakisoba sandwich to Anuma. Anuma then agrees to help them out and very soon, they see Oga coming their way. Takano and Yumeko immediately rush into hiding and let Anuma deal with Oga. Although it may seem dumb to use this as an excuse to get Oga alone, Anuma decides to go with it and soon questions Oga if he wants to play hide and seek with him. Even though the girls believe this to be a foolish idea and why not as no one would fall for such a thing, to their surprise, an unexpected scene unfolds right in front of their eyes. Oga agrees to play hide and seek with Anuma and mentions to Anuma that this is the first time he has seen him asking him to play. Oga then proceeds to go into hiding and asks Anuma to seek him out. Meanwhile, Anuma stands there in utter confusion as he cannot believe that Oga fell for such a foolish idea. On the other hand, from hiding, Takano is wondering if Anuma is stupid or something. However, the plan seems to have worked and they cannot complain about it as it's in their favor anyway. Takano then wishes good luck to Yumiko and in no time, Yumiko makes her way to where Oga went to hide. While he is in hiding, Oga notices the arrival of Yumiko, which leads him into a state of panic. Oh man, remember how Oga used to freak out about Yumiko being like a ghost? Well, that's exactly what happens here. Oga's mind is racing with a million escape plans. He's so panicked that he doesn't even care about the hide-and-seek game anymore. He just wants out of there, pronto. As he starts creeping away, guess who spots him? Yup, Yumiko. She swoops in like a ninja touching his neck with both hands. And let me tell you, Oga lets out a scream that probably echoes down the hallway. Anuma and Takano start wondering if it was Oga making all that noise. Takano decides to investigate and promises Anuma some juice and a sandwich later as she heads off. When Takano catches up with Yumiko, she's curious how it went. Yumiko spills the beans about getting to touch Oga a bit, and Takano's all like, Oh, I'll never forget this cozy feeling. So, there's this group of girls chatting about an upcoming volleyball match, and one of them mentions how they hope Anuma will be there. Takano and Yumeko overhear this convo, and Takano's wheels start turning. She turns to Yumeko like, Hey, why don't you make lunch for Ova after his volleyball thing? It'll be a nice gesture. Then, she drops the bomb. You should also confess your love to him on the same day. Yeah, I know, it sounds kinda wild since Oga doesn't seem to have any feelings for Yumeko. But hey, stranger things have happened. They say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, right? So, they start brainstorming what to cook for Oga when Nanamiya shows up and asks what's up. Takano spills the beans about their plan to cook for Oga but admits they're clueless about cooking. Nanamiya jumps in to lend a hand and Takano's all grateful for the assist. Nanamiya then asks Yumiko what she wants to cook for Oga. With sparkles in her eyes, Yumiko excitedly mentions that she wants to make a hamburger steak and omuris with a heart drawn on top of it for Oga. The day of the volleyball match arrives and all the friends gather at Takano's place. They then begin to cook and soon the butler brings in the meat after Takano calls for him. However, since the hamburger would require minced meat to make a patty, Takano and Yumiko appear to be clueless about what to do next. Nanamiya is there though and the two should have no problem with the cooking. Shortly after, all the ingredients are brought in and then Nanamiya asks the two to chop the onions finely and mix them with the meat. Takano then swiftly calls upon her butler to do the work for her. But then, what is the point of them cooking for Oga if they would not cook it themselves? And Yumiko seems to be of the same thought as well, and soon when she mentions this to Takano, she wastes no time in sending the butler away. 
Soon, Yumeiko begins cutting the onion and while being clumsy, she even manages to get her finger cut and soon, the blood starts coming out. Takano then treats Yumeiko's cut and the cooking session continues. So, the meat's sizzling away on the stove, but Yumeiko gets distracted by something else. She's trying to infuse her cooking with love, you know, but she's going about it all wrong. Instead of quietly focusing on the food, she's chatting away and tossing words at the bowl like it's some kind of magic potion. Nanamiya notices this and steps in to give her a crash course in cooking with feelings. She's like, Yumiko, you gotta put your heart into it, but not like that. After a little pep talk, Yumiko finally gets it, or at least she pretends to. She flashes this kinda creepy smile and gets back to cooking. But here's the kicker. When the food's finally ready, it's not exactly a culinary masterpiece. Nope, it's charred to a crisp. Nanamiya then asks Yumiko to draw a heart on top of the amorous like she wanted with the ketchup. However, the food has turned out so black that the heart is not even visible after Yumiko draws it. The three then make their way to the volleyball match where they see Oga playing efficiently while the other friends from his group are sitting on the bench, taking their time after being exhausted. Thereupon, Takano sees Anuma present and begins to wave at him. And soon when Suzuki greets them, Takano reveals that they are there to give Oga the lunch that they made for him. Shortly after, Takano hands over the lunchbox to Suzuki and asks him to give it to Oga when he has the opportunity. Upon taking the lunchboxes, Suzuki notices that there is a lot of food that they cooked for Oga and assures Takano that he will make sure that the food reaches Oga. Takano and Yumiko then decide to go into hiding once again, and meanwhile, Suzuki makes his way to Oga and proceeds to hand him over the lunchbox while mentioning that a junior girl made it all for him. Suzuki furthermore remarks that the girl totally made it with love and soon pushes Oga into opening it already. Oga then opens the lunchbox just to see that blacked out food with a disfigured heart drawn over it. The smell gets so obnoxious that Suzuki has to hold his nose tight to not get any smell out of it. However, Oga mentions he will bite anyway. Soon, Oga picks up a piece of meat and puts it in his mouth only to be hit with the extremely delicious taste. For the first few seconds though, Oga doesn't say anything which leads Suzuki to think that the food is tasty, but how much? He doesn't know. But soon Oga mentions that he will eat this sort of food every day that he can and this seems to give Suzuki a level of certainty as to how good the food tastes. Meanwhile, the ladies are spectating the scenes unfold from behind a wall. And soon after hearing Oga's remarks on how the food tastes, Takano and Yumiko can't help but jump from excitement. They become so happy since their not-so-perfectly executed plan ends with a success. Meanwhile, Nanamiya is standing there, contemplating how it all worked out. On the other hand, Yumiko appears to be lost in her world of excitement after hearing Oga say that he could eat the food cooked by her on any given day. Yumiko then expresses her happiness in front of the two and soon, Takano suggests to Yumiko that she should go and thank Oga for such remarks. So, Oga's strolling down the locker room, and his stomach sounding like a symphony because he's eaten way too much. Out of nowhere, Yumiko pops up and wraps her arms around him, thanking him for who knows what. When Oga spins around to figure out what's happening, he nearly jumps out of his skin at the sight of Yumiko clinging to him. Yumiko goes on about how she's gonna cook for him every single day from now on. Oka's so freaked out that he collapses to the ground, clutching his stomach and probably regretting every meal he's ever eaten. Once Yumiko leaves, she finds Takano and Nanamiya and spills the beans. She's all proud that she told Oga she'd cook for him every day. And now his shoe locker gets a packed lunch like clockwork. But here's the twist, Oga's not into it at all. The whole thing's giving him the heebie-jeebies and he wants out ASAP. In the classroom, Mitsuko and Nanamiya appear to be having an interesting discussion. Takano notices it and decides to question the two as to what they are discussing that has gotten them this excited. Soon, Nanamiya approaches Takano and reveals to her that Mitsuko said that her wish came true when she prayed at the shrine. Nanamiya then conveys that it might be possible for Yumiko for things to go well with Oga if she is to pray at the shrine as well. The idea of it sounds amazing to Takano and Yumiko, and they waste no time in agreeing with it as well. All three then decide to go to the shrine. After a while, Takeno arrives with Yumiko to Nanamiya who was already waiting for them at a shrine. Thereupon, Takeno reveals that there are a lot of places, so she notes down a few of them and begins to show them to others. The list happens to be very long, so Nanamiya proposes that since they would not be able to visit all those shrines on that day, they should visit as many as they can. Yumiko mentions that she wants a good luck charm as well. The three then begin to make their way into the shrine, but Nanamiya asks them to bow in front of the Tori gate first. Furthermore, Nanamiya mentions that they should not walk down from the middle and soon Takeno 
conveys to Nanamiya that she knows a lot about the place. So, Yumeiko tries to sneak into the shrine, but she hits a brick wall. Nanamiya whips out her phone and does a quick search, only to find out that the shrine doesn't let in folks it considers unclean. Talk about a buzzkill, right? Nanamiya is ready to bolt, but then Takano has a light bulb moment. She pulls out her Yaku yoke amulet and hands it to Yumeiko, suggesting she give it a try. And what do you know? It's like magic. Yumeiko holds the amulet and waltzes right into the shrine, feeling pretty awesome about it all. They then proceed to make their way into the shrine and begin to pray. Takano prays for Yumiko and Oga to reunite with each other as soon as possible. Shortly after, they make their way out of the shrine and it appears to be getting dark and they have gone around quite a bit now. While walking down the road, Takano inquires Yumeiko if she has a lot of good luck charms and immediately, Yumeiko begins to scurry around in her purse and takes out all the good luck charms that she has gotten. Soon, Nanamiya assures Yumeiko that everything will work out with Oga. Furthermore, Nanamiya notices that Yumiko is looking cuter all of a sudden and out of nowhere and even brings it to Takano's attention. Shortly after, they make their way to another shrine and Nanamiya asks Yumiko to wait this one out. Poor Nanamiya believes that Yumiko will still be deemed unclean if she tries to enter the shrine. But to her surprise, this doesn't happen at all. Yumiko very easily makes her way into this shrine without any obstacles. So, Takano's totally oblivious to the change in Yumiko's vibe, seeing her just like always. But Nanami is not letting this slide. She whips out her phone and snaps a selfie with the three of them. Then, she shows Takano the pic and points out how Yumiko looks way prettier than usual. Takano's still not convinced, but Nanami is not backing down. She's like, come on, Takano, if Yumiko looked like this all the time, Oga wouldn't be running away from her. And that's when it hits Nanamiya. Maybe this is Yumiko's chance to get closer to Oga. She grabs Yumiko's hand and declares they gotta hustle over to Oga pronto. Meanwhile, over at Oga's place, Ri's chilling, watching some horror flick that she's finding about as believable as a talking unicorn. Soon, Oga makes his way to Ri, picks up the TV remote, turns it off, and reveals that he wants to go to the convenience store. Ri inquires Oga as to why he would not go on his own to which Oga asks her if she can with him. The offer is not very intriguing for Ri at all, and she abruptly refuses to go with him to the convenience store. Oga then offers to buy Rai one Mabo stick. Although it may seem an interesting offer, Ri remains undeterred as she once again refuses to tag along with Oga to the convenience store. After a while, Oga makes his way down the sidewalk while being disappointed for not timing it right, or else he believes that he would have been successful in convincing Rie to come along with him. Luckily, Takano and the gang catch up to Oga just in time. Nanamiya wastes no time and calls out to Oga, urging him to befriend Yumeko. But as soon as Oga turns around and spots Yumeko, he's off like a shot, running for dear life. Nanamiya is left feeling disappointed and frustrated, wondering why Oga keeps turning Yumeko down. Meanwhile, Takano's noticing that Nanamiya has been acting a bit strange all day. She checks in to make sure everything's okay. Nanamiya insists she's fine and goes on about how Yumeko looks even more beautiful than before, especially when she's talking. Takano suddenly remembers a picture she took after giving Yumiko a makeover and shows it to Nanamiya. Takano believes that the makeup that she did on Yumiko looked perfect and her dress looked pretty as well. However, in the picture, the makeup is not only horrendous, but Yumiko looks creepy as well and it creeps out Nanamiya to a certain extent as well after she sees the picture. Takano gushes about how cute the picture turned out, but Nanamiya's got something else on her mind. She starts showing off the selfie she took of Yumiko at the shrine, where she looked incredibly beautiful and adorable. But when Nanamiya looks at the picture again, she's shocked to see this creepy smile on Yumiko's face. Takano, on the other hand, doesn't see anything unusual. This whole weird situation freaks Nanamiya out a bit. It's like Takano can see something beyond what Nanamiya can, almost like she's looking past Yumeiko's uncleanliness. Anuma and his friends are having a volleyball match and Anuma appears to be quite demotivated. Soon, as he is asked to catch the ball coming his way, Anuma attempts to do so and even manages to catch it, but sends the ball somewhere else. Meanwhile, a beautiful girl has her eyes on Anuma and finds him to be very cool. So there's this girl, Manu, who's totally zoned out, completely focused on something else. She's admiring Anuma's motivation, but is he really as motivated as she thinks? Anyway, she's also checking out his pretty face, totally oblivious to everything else around her. But then, out of nowhere, a voice calls her. But Manu is so lost in her thoughts that she doesn't even flinch. Her name gets called again, but she's still not paying attention. The ball hits her in the face. Ouch! 
Manny's friends rush over to make sure she's okay and scold her for not being present. One of them points out that they've been trying to get her attention for ages and tells her to focus on the match. Manu quickly apologizes, admitting she was distracted and didn't see the ball coming. As a member of the junior female volleyball club, Manu's disappointed in herself for losing focus. Her friend suggests she takes a break to recover and get back in the game. While Anuma is running low on his sports drink, Manu, who has been keeping her eyes on him, notices the situation. She sees it as the perfect chance to strike up a conversation by offering him her own drink. Excited at the prospect, she rushes towards Anuma, but just when she's about to reach him, the bottle cap mysteriously pops open by itself, causing the drink to spill all over the ground. Manu ends up stepping on the spilled drink and takes a tumble. Manu is devastated by the bad luck, especially because she sees this as her golden opportunity to get close to Anuma. In her mind, this moment could be the start of something special, maybe even leading to a relationship with him but she realizes she might be getting ahead of herself. Well, Manu's luck takes a turn for the better, and she manages to salvage some of her drink. With determination in her eyes, she picks herself up and charges towards Anuma. Finally reaching him, she hands over the bottle, hoping he'll take a sip. But wouldn't you know it, bad luck strikes again. Manu trips and lands on the ground once more, spilling the drink all over herself and even getting some on Anuma. Talk about a mess. But Manu's quick to apologize for her clumsiness and Anuma, being the chill guy he is, reassures her that it's no big deal. In a bit of a panic, not sure what to do next now that her plan has gone awry, Manu rummages through her bag for a towel to help clean up Anuma. She rushes back and hands it over, hoping to make things right. Soon, as Manu hands Anuma the towel, it turns out to be a rag, and then once again, Manu does what she does best and begins to apologize to Anuma while making weird crying noises. However, Anuma once again assures Manu that it is all right and brings it to her attention that she is the wetter one, so she should focus on wiping herself first. But Manu's focus still appears to be on those towels, and soon mentions to Anuma that she thought they were towels and not rags. Furthermore, Manu requests that Anuma not worry about her at all, when suddenly Anuma offers Manu his towel and asks her to wipe herself with it. Moreover, Anuma suggests to Manu to not wipe her face with the dust cloth that he just handed over to her. So, Manu's feeling a bit competitive, especially when she sees how close Takano is with Anuma. She's determined not to let Takano outshine her. After a bit of pondering, she decides to make her move. Manu catches up to Anuma as he's strolling down the hallway and returns his towel, mentioning how she even took the time to iron it properly. Anuma appreciates the gesture, but then he notices that the towel's color has changed. Manu's instantly overcome with emotion and starts crying, doing her signature move of dropping to her knees and apologizing. Just then, Takano shows up and joins the fray. She looks at the towel and realizes something's off. She offers to have her butler fix it, leaving Anuma a bit skeptical. Meanwhile, Manu's still on her knees, watching it all unfold. And hey, she can't help but think Takano's pretty cool. On the other hand, Takano asks for something in return from Anuma to get his towel fixed. She then proposes to Anuma that she will get his towel fixed if he is willing to tell her three things about Oga. However, Anuma does not seem to be in any mood to take any offers and mentions to Takano that she can keep the towel. Meanwhile, Manu's jealousy greatly increases. Furthermore, Takano in response mentions to Anuma that she doesn't need anything from him in return as she has appeared to change her mind. So, Manu's still feeling guilty about the towel fiasco and offers to make it up to Anuma in any way she can. But he's all chill about it, saying he doesn't need anything from her in return. Talk about a letdown. Then, Takano swoops in and reminds Manu it's time to head back to class. As they're walking, Manu can't hold back and asks Takano if she's into Anuma. Takano's response, classic Takano, she says she likes Anuma as much as she likes her dog. Ah, okay then, not exactly clear, right? Manu takes this as a glimmer of hope, thinking maybe she still has a shot with Anuma. But Takano quickly bursts her bubble, reminding her that Anuma just gave her a major rejection, and in the nicest way possible too. Ouch! Manu's feeling crushed, realizing she's never seen Anuma turn someone down like that before. To add salt to the wound, Takano suggests maybe Anuma just isn't into Manu. Talk about a harsh reality check. So in class one day, the teacher hands back the graded test papers. Oka's eager to know how he did, so he asks Suzuki if he scored above 30 marks. Suzuki fires back with the same question. They decide to reveal their scores on the count of three. Drumroll, please. Turns out, Oka got 33 marks while Suzuki managed 36. They're stoked they didn't fail and high-five each other in excitement. Meanwhile, their other friends are low-key freaking out, 
because Suzuki and Oga were this close to failing. Oga credits their past to Oishi, saying she helped them out. Oishi chimes in, confirming that it was her book that she lent to Anuma that saved the day. Later, they show their results to the teacher who forbids them from going on the field trip if they are to fail, and soon when he realizes that they have all passed, he couldn't help but allow the students to go on the field trip. Later, on the bus, while they are on their way to the field trip, Suzuki questions what if the ghost, Yumeko, arrives at their inn. However, Oga seems to be sure of the fact that she won't come to them this far. So, like, suddenly this super loud buzzing noise hits the air, totally catching all of us off guard. We're all looking around, totally puzzled, trying to figure out where the heck it's coming from, you know. Then, Anuma is like, hold up, guys, and he whips out his phone, showing it to the rest of us, and he's like, oh, it's just my phone going crazy. And get this, he's like, it's my bro hitting me up online, trying to reach out to me. And then someone's like, yo, why don't you hit him back? But Anima's all chill, he's like, nah, it's cool. My bro will figure out I'm ghosting him, and he'll stop blowing up my phone. Anuma then mentions that his brother speaks to him wherever he goes, even if it is the toilet. After a while, they make their way to the designated location. Shortly after, the group of friends rush off the bus in a state of excitement. However, soon when they begin to rush away, Oishi immediately asks them to carry their luggage in a scolding fashion. Soon, Suzuki and Oga begin to pick up their luggage when suddenly from behind comes Manu who is trying to carry a humongous luggage. Soon, when she questions as to whose luggage it is, Anuma comes forward and mentions that it is his and further mentions that his brother packed it for him. Seeing that the luggage belongs to Anuma, Manu decides to seize this opportunity to further better her image in Anuma's eyes. So, she soon begins to carry Anuma's luggage. However, the unluckiness is still tagging along with Manu as she trips and falls yet again. The fall makes her hand loosen the grip from the luggage which results in the luggage getting dumped out. Seeing that there is a plushie and a shower cap, Oga immediately comments on Anuma and mentions that he does not need such stuff. Later, Nanamiya mentions to Anuma that they will be making curry for lunch that day and further asks him to go and cut the meat. In response, Anuma objects that his hands might get dirty. Manu's just hanging back, thinking to herself, hey, I'm in the same cooking crew as Anuma. Maybe if I bust out some killer knife skills, I'll catch his eye. So, she's plotting away, imagining Anuma being all impressed, maybe even dreaming help her pose or something. Yeah, it's a little silly, but kinda adorable, right? Anyway, when Manu finally decides to put her plan into action, guess what? Classic Manu move, she ends up messing it all up. She accidentally cuts her hair, and soon when Nanamiya notices this, she gets agitated and abruptly asks Anuma and Manu to go and get the vegetable cases from outside. Soon, they begin to make their way and meanwhile, the only thing going through Manu's mind is that she and Anuma are alone. She believes this is another opportunity for her to approach Anuma. Meanwhile, Anuma is frightened to find out what stupid stuff Manu will do next. On the other hand, Manu is all happy and excited and soon begins a conversation with Anuma while asking him the ordinary things like if he is enjoying the field trip and all. However, Anuma only makes the short talk, leaving Manu to contemplate what she should talk about next. Shortly after, they make their way to the vegetable cases, and soon after assessing them closely, Anuma believes that it would be heavy for them to lift it. So, Manu's like, okay, maybe I'll try another angle. What if I show off my strength by loving those veggie crates all by myself? And, you're probably thinking, no way, it can't get any dumber than this, right? Well, hold on to your hats, cause Manu's about to take it up a notch. She grabs that crate like she's Wonder Woman or something and starts hauling it back to the kitchen. But here's the kicker. Along the way, she's dropping veggies left and right without even realizing it. So, by the time she struts into the kitchen, thinking she's all impressive, there's nothing left in that crate but dust and disappointment. And of course, it's Nanamiya who's gotta break it to her that she basically left a trail of veggies behind her like some kind of clueless veggie fairy. Shortly after, Anuma arrives there as well, but he has come empty-handed as well even though Nanamiya was expecting him to pick at least something up along the way. She then questions Anuma as to why he didn't pick anything up to which Anuma mentions that he was asked to take it easy. Upon inquiring further, Nanamiya realizes that Manu was the one who had asked Anuma to take it easy. Soon, Oga intervenes and mentions that he will go and pick up the dropped vegetables. So, Oga stumbles upon the spot where Manu accidentally dropped the veggies. Being the good guy he is, he starts picking them up one by one and puts them back in their case. But just as he's doing that, he hears his name being called from behind. And who does he see? Yup, it's Yumeko. 
And you know what Oka does. He does what he always does when he sees Yumiko, he bolts. Meanwhile, poor Yumiko was stuck in a pond, feeling quite let down that Oga didn't lend a hand. Oga scurries back to the kitchen, looking terrified. When asked what happened, he admits he came back empty-handed because Yumiko was there. Meanwhile, Takano's over there trying to explain to Yumiko that sometimes when you can't see Oga, that's when you want to see him the most. Tough love, I guess. So, Nanami is off in La La Land, lost in her thoughts, right? Takano notices and she's like, hey, what's eating you? Something on your mind? Nanamiya snaps out of it and starts spilling the beans about how Yumiko was all cute and adorable the other day at the shrine. She's all like, if we can keep her looking like that, it'll be way easier to get her closer to Oga. But then comes the million dollar question, how the heck do we make sure Yumiko stays cute like that? Then, out of nowhere, they spot Manu on the floor, bawling her eyes out over some potpourri she accidentally smashed. And they're like, dude, what's with the potpourri? And Manu's like, it smells so good, I always carry it around for our club stuff. Hearing this, Nanamiya gets an idea and suggests that maybe Yumiko can carry some salt or something else that could purify her, and thus, she would stay pretty for a long time. Takano appears to be impressed with the idea and decides to give her two cents as well when she mentions that it would also be nice to have products from temples together with the shrine ones. Takano then proposes that they should use Anuma for some stuff as well. Shortly after, they gather all the necessary stuff. The next day, Anuma arrives and brings with him things that they could wear to pray. Moreover, Anuma has brought a necklace and a rosary. Anuma then inquires if that is the stuff that they needed and Nanamiya is swift to respond as she mentions that this is exactly what they needed. Nanamiya further mentions that with this, even if one goes back to how they looked normally, they can be beautiful again in no time. She further mentions that if Yumiko remains beautiful like this, then she is sure that Oga will not be afraid to get close to her. On the other hand, Manu mentions that she is currently so close to Anuma, and while she is panicking, Taikano warns Manu that she might break Anuma's rosary that he just gave them. So, while Anuma is sitting there scratching his head, trying to figure out what these girls are jabbering about, they go ahead and kick their plan into gear. Nanamiya takes charge and starts sprinkling salt all over Yumiko, chanting for her to stay cute. And get this, as the salt dust settles, boom. Yumiko looked like a total knockout, stunning everyone in the room. Yumiko is all like, let's go see Oga, but Nanami is not done yet. She's like, hold up, we need some extra mojo, and suggests sticking amulets under Yumiko's clothes for extra purification vibes. Takano's like, yeah, let's slap some on her back too, just to be safe. They proceed to do that and after assessing Yumiko entirely, they decide that she is good to go as the amulets are perfectly hidden inside her uniform. Soon, Yumiko reveals that she has created a good luck charm on her own as well and soon presents it to the two. She further reveals that there is one more thing and proceeds to reveal that she has written Oga's name with a pink, which is a sign of affection. That is not it, there is one more thing and Yumiko has also written a few words of affection and the things that she likes about Oga. Clumsy, Yumiko accidentally drops the papers on which she had written those words and they appear to be a lot. What's more is that Yumiko is not only looking scary now, but is also giving the vibes of a stalker. Soon, Yumiko mentions that once she started writing, she could not stop as in her mind, Oga holds a very high place, and in her mind, Oga is the perfect man that she can ever have. Seeing that everything is prepared and there appear to be no more obstacles, Takano proceeds to message Oga and asks him to come to meet her in the hallway as she has something to ask of him. Oga is quick to reply and mentions that he will be coming over soon and in no time, he arrives. After that, Takano grabs Yumeko and pulls her out to introduce her to Oga and mentions that she has been hoping to be friends with him. Seeing Yumeko, Oga does not get scared this time and soon waves at her, leaving her to panic yet again. Soon, the effect runs out from Yumeko and she once again starts looking scary. But soon Manu comes for the save and asks Oga as to how his friendship started with Anuma. Manu seems to have saved the situation to an extent. And meanwhile, Nanamiya throws the salt on Yumeko, once again making her pretty. Nanamiya then once again pulls Yumiko out and introduces her yet again to Oga and mentions that she wants to get to know him. She further mentions to Oga that he can hang out with her if he likes, making Oga startled. So, Nanamiya and Yumiko are low-key freaking out because Nanamiya almost spilled the beans about Yumiko's crush on Oga. Quick on her feet, Nanamiya switches gears and tells Oga that Yumiko's all about volleyball and stuff, you know, keeping it bait. But here's the kicker, Anuma. He's like the strong silent type, not saying squat. Oga's probably feeling relieved. 
thinking there's no drama brewing. But then, Oka's like, hey, let's all hang out, including Anuma. And boom, Anuma's eavesdropping and shuts it down pronto. Like, not happening, dude. Seeing that Anuma has also been asked to hang out, Manu gets a bit worried as she will not be in his presence. All of a sudden, Takano mentions that she will be going too then to which Nanamiya comments that since Takano is a good friend of Anuma, the four of them should go together. So, poor Manu's feeling a bit down, accepting defeat and mumbling about catching Anuma next Sunday instead. But then, Takano steps in and introduces herself to Oga, suggesting he should chat with Yumiko about more than just volleyball. Oga's totally on board with the plan. They're about to bounce when Manu tries to speak up, wanting to tag along too. But Nanamiya cuts her off, telling her not to sweat it. Then, Nanamiya drops this bombshell on Manu, they're going undercover too. How intriguing, right? Now, we're left hanging, wondering what's gonna happen next with Yumiko and this sneaky plan. Can't wait to find out.